up in the poor industrial suburb of Gary, Indiana, Michael Jackson and his brothers started out life seemingly behind the eight ball. But as part of a working class African-American family, the Jackson Five knew they had to work harder than others to get where they wanted. Ruled with a rod of iron by their ambitious father, Joe, they knew that recognition of their talents wasn't just going to land in their laps. Starting out in the 1960s with only a few African-American performers on TV, the Jacksons thought to try their luck at local performance theaters. I said, never forget, we're preparing for the Black Expo. We had Quincy Jones and Nance Wilson and the little brother Flack and Samba Davis and all the artists uh, uh, performing that night, uh, that, that week, and Marvin Gaye. So a friend came and said, these kids performing across the street at the Regal want to perform. I said, well, that's, that's no room for them. I mean, I'm like to accommodate them, there's no room. They said, well, can they do a matinee on Saturday afternoon? I said, I don't know. So I said, well, come down and they at least want to touch your afro. So I went downstairs, and that was the boys in the station wagon with, with Joe and the instruments in the, in the U-Haul. They were performing across the street at the, at the Regal Theater. Of course, they performed. And of course, stratosphere and never came down. <laughs> it just phenomenal. Next stop was the famous Apollo Theater in Harlem, with a rich pedigree of supporting new African American performers. Always a popular meeting place for local live theater goers, the Jackson Five soon became an instant hit. It wasn't long until fame came calling, and the Jacksons won over audiences of all ages. However, even at the peak of his solo career, as his former publicist Susan Blonde points out, Michael still had to battle for acceptance when it came to mainstream television. I saw the off-the-wall success and the thriller success, the super success. Before that, we had other going places. We had other records and parties at Studio 54 and, and great times. But then, by off the wall, he was doing amazingly well, and that was his first cover, Rolling Stone, and we were breaking barriers. It was very hard to get someone who wasn't white on the cover of magazines or even MTV. So, um, but with Thriller, every barrier was broken. Stadiums all over the world were sold out. It became the biggest record of all time. At the U.S. Essence Music Festival in America, which celebrates African-American music and culture, Michael Jackson was honored with performances by Beyonce, Neo, and salt and Pepper. And Queen Latifah took the time to acknowledge the history with the Jackson family. You know, the family has been honored in that magazine. Janet's graced the covers many times. Uh, they're part of who we are. They're part of our legacy as African Americans. So, you know, it's only right that Essence honors them, honors him. At the Black Entertainment Television Awards, the first awards to be held after Michael's death, the gathered company took the opportunity to reflect upon the legacy of a man who did so much to unite cultures through the genius of his music. And I'm sure we've all been to a lot of award shows and some are not that high energy. This one is really genuine and beautiful. You feel people really feeling the need to express their love for someone who will never be gone from us because he will always, his legacy will always be here. So it's really beautiful to be in a room full of people who share one common love and, and feel the desire to, to yell it and scream it and shout it at every possible turn. With tributes from a variety of popular African-American singers, including New Edition, Jamie Foxx, and Jay-Z, the trail that the legendary Michael Jackson had blazed for minority performers was more apparent than ever. Thank you.